waiting to be sworn in. Ever since then, and I've seen the value of what they've done. It was from there I got the idea of error. And you've seen the few minutes and the interruption that you've had today. We are happy to announce to you that Heron's project in Nigeria is on course, finally. <laughs> 72 megawatts will be in place, and we are ready to, we hope that will be commissioned by December or before then. That will boost our energy for Lagos State industries in addition to what we normally get from electricity supply. We inherited a disintegrated infrastructure, completely disintegrated. Telecommunication is being gradually liberalized, but it's not there yet. And we need those two areas to develop quickly. We are creating that environment where the private sector, organized private sector, will be the catalyst of uh, catalyst of to a growth. Lagos State is the has the largest population and the largest market in the country, in, if not in, in Africa, the largest population. Where the Lagos City metropolis alone is the third largest city in the world. The population of Lagos is over 10 million people at the last can by United Nations and UNDP. But ever since some incidents in the country, people have been migrating here hundreds of thousands, creating a huge we have the smallest lands area among the 36 states of the country, which is around you know, 3,500 uh, square meters. However, we house 60% of the industry of this country. The maritime port activities is here in Lagos. And the busiest here port is here in Lagos. We used to have house majority of the embassies before the federal government moved, but we still house majority of them in a lesson of this situation because a whole lot of them still observe Abuja and sees them as a transit place. They are moving gradually but leaving. Uh, services behind in Lagos, there will be no problem uh, getting in touch with the embassy personnel. We are taking the approach that only a private sector government partnership can revive and sustain the economy, particularly of our state. Lagos State is endowed. The area of oil, we are not concentrating on that. The after oil, we have some offshore discoveries and so on and so forth, but we don't want to treat it as part of any car because it's been a cost to some other states. And we don't want to emphasize. We know we have the population, we have the largest and the most valuable real estate in the world, in Nigeria. We have a vibrant, highly educated workforce. The most educated section of the country. And the most accessible state. most sophisticated to and it is the heartbeat of Nigeria economy that is the truth. <coughs> Area of interest we need to build infrastructure. We plan
plan to have a private sector partnership, either BOT or BOO in our infrastructure development. Uh, need companies that are ready to invest in some of the highways and bridges and uh, told them we need a huge interested party in telecommunication. Our mass transit program is on course. The Metro Line is, this is uh, being discussed already. Uh, we have attracted the interest of uh, World Bank once again. We think we are evaluating between the light rail. Light rail that is less disruptive and destructive to the right of way. We are looking at this corridor of the existing railway track to, really, according to the study already conducted by the World Bank, to take off from west, west to east and uh, uh, south to north. And then we can now uh, support some other areas, either with metro or mass bus transit system. That is a program that we must embark on quickly. And that we are very serious about that. We are privatizing our water project. Interested investors are welcome to be granted concessions. We're thinking of breaking them into two early deliverables. The Lagos Island likely to continue, <coughs> while the northern and the west section of the uh, state, <coughs> which is now water that much now, but uh, a, a huge pipe network already buried over five to six years, which is not being supplied with water, might need to be a lot of tests and testing and fixing. Uh, they do not have the opportunity or the privilege of a mortgage. So these houses are often snatched away from them by the speculators and turn them into landlords because they need immediate payment, outright purchase, a bulk amount of money between, I mean, you know, can you imagine if, if I have two, uh, 3,000 in, in US and have a good income provide, with a good credit rating, I can put some money there and see and get uh, uh, a mortgage finance over 20 years to, <laughs> and become uh, a home my own home. That is not the case in Nigeria. <coughs> And we have a highly valuable real estate in the, in the country. So in the area of transportation, telecommunication, agricultural housing and environment, water supply to mention a few, we welcome private sector participation. And we will be proud to give you the same treatment that has been given to Aaron from this section and Lagos. Lagos State is proud that Aaron is investing here and they will continue to do so in the next two years where we will hope to fully eradicate the shortage of electricity to industry and various homes. Our target is that it should not last longer than two years. Because the Orobo uh, plant will commence activity on the second phase of the project, which is uh, going to through the pi uh, gas pipeline connection and uh, produce 500 between 6 to 800 megawatts of electricity, in addition to through another 70 that we already uh, have a true emergency. Plus, whatever we can have out of the privatized Airbnb, that we have a capacity of 1,300 thereabouts, 
we hope to have a source of energy of over 2,000 megawatts for Lagos State and the next two years, not later than two years. That is surplus energy to, to, to give to other neighboring countries and uh, states if we want. If you add me on the area of homeowners for homeowners, on tourism and hotels, beaches, many beaches, many small islands of immense, immense potential for growth and tourism and hotels. And hotels. I would believe golf courses, casinos, and other hotels, areas, and infrastructures, and shopping malls. That's what it's like. Nigerians are the largest shoppers around the world. Go to Europe. Go to Dubai. Go to Beirut. Go to London. Go to America. We like to shop. But we can't find those shopping malls here to do the business. So where the Hugo Boss and brand names of this world that you know we all shop at will we'll be able to establish the business here and uh, get them to flourish. And uh, we believe Woolworth will a company like Woolworth, who are making inquiries already, would like to take up you know, uh, shop spaces around here. And Marcus Spencer of London and a whole lot of other ones there too. So if we have the right investor to boost that uh, area of subset. Uh, I'd be glad to arrange the one on one discussion on you know areas. We can tell you I I am very lucky and blessed with the members of the cabinet council. We have majority of them from the private organized private sector. So you they can easily communicate with you, uh, potential investors in there. The language is the understandable by you. And we we can brag of the best cabinet member in this country. Better than that. Through the democratization is now in place. Standard Charter is here, City Bank is here. We are hoping that HSBC will, will, will come in a, in, a, in a big way. The Lagos State Government believes so much in transparency and serious accountability. We are already embarked upon a transformation of the accounting system. To all the loopholes have been blocked. Computerization is ongoing. Our banking system will come through the SWIFT. You cannot do business with Lagos State unless you have a SWIFT from this month. That's, that's a panic. And uh, we'll have uh, an aggressive monetary system. And uh, no, this is an open door, open book policy in Lagos State. And accountability and transparency is the password here. Thank you. Welcome once again.